So next up, we've got our flyweights, 52 kilo limit. Jutamas Jitpong of Thailand, Zari Nikat of India. So making our way to the red corner here, Jutamas Jitpong of Thailand. Two big, big wins in the quarterfinals and semi-finals. A split against Uzbekistan, Tursunoy Rakimova, and another split against China, Shakurbakova of Kazakhstan. She boxed in the Olympics last year, got to the quarterfinals, losing out to Bus Chakiroglu, who's boxing at 50 kilos in this competition rather than 52. He's boxed for the World Championships before in 2019. And this is Zari Nikat, bronze medalist at the Asian Championships. 2019, her best senior result. Boxed to the world champs in Astana in 2016, got to the quarterfinals a few years ago now. A silver medalist to the women's youth championships. Good form this year, they won the Stranger at the end of February, saw her there, and that was a, a good, good run she had. It was a very strong field, actually, men's and women's. But what is always a terrific tournament. too much between them in terms of height or age. And Jipong would be the slight favourite maybe due to the fact that she managed to get to Tokyo and was perilously close to getting to the medal stages, one win away. She's boxed as a pro, 6-0 and as a pro currently, Jipong. Well, we had a fantastic opener at minimum weight. So hopefully these two can follow. Jitpong in the red, Thailand, Nikat, India in the blue. We start there from Jitpong. Jab down to the body, through the right hand over the top, towards the head. Nice jab again there, just flipped up from the waist. Look at short with the one two. Little left on the inside there from Nick the referee just having a quick word. Got a touch of holding. Looking for the body there, Jip on. from the cat just go dip on a tap with that left hand after the referee had ordered them to stop boxing. Just short with that combination there, Jip Pong. There's been quite a lot of that so far. Neither one of these two has quite found their range yet. Reaching with the right hand there, Jip Pong, and the cat came back with her left and was very, very close to landing a good shot there.
good right hand there from Nikat. Closed the distance and got the left hand in there too as she was up close and then just pulls back, finds a way out. Throws her left hand. Referee just telling her to keep her head up there, the tie fight. So left hand on the break almost there from Jit Pong. And both of them coming forward at the same time, just shut down that space. Short with the right hand, and she was almost made to pay there, Nick Jit Pong, though, just couldn't quite reach with, with her right. There's not much in this opening round. Good left hand, nice crunching right, followed it through there, too, from Nick Cat. And probably the more eye catching shots have come from her, I would say. That was a snappy left right, and it's not the first time she's landed that either. Right, so body there from Nick Cat. Chip Hong of the two has been on the front foot more. And Chip Hong taking a seat in that red corner. I'd go blue corner with that one. As I said, I thought Nick out landed the the more solid blows of the two. Just got her feet quite close and, and let that right hand go a couple of times. And ten lines across the board there for the Indian fighter. Teams out in force, brought a strong side here, India, as they generally tend to do. Themselves, Kazakhstan, Turkey and Ukraine bring in the maximum number of, of 12 fighters. So Nikat with that advantage after round one. Finishes that combination well with the left hand. And then sets those feet and again looks to throw. Right hand on the inside, I think, got through. Left hand there from Jip Pong. Just timed that nicely as Nikat came forward. And catches her again with the left as, as the Indian just looked to close in on her there. Pulled her feet back, took her feet back out and just gave herself that, that touch of room. And again, just falling short there, Nikat. She's doing a better job in this round, Jip Pong, of just maintaining that distance between the two of them, which she can because she's got that bit of height and she's definitely got longer arms too. If she gets caught at mid-range, which she did a few times in that first round, then she's got a problem. That isn't where she wants to be. She's caught in mid-range exactly then, too. Just took a step in. That was a nice one, too, there from her. But just before that, she got stuck in no-man's land, really. And the cat landed a couple. So it's the final minute of round two. Nikat took the opening round 10-9 with all five judges, so Jitpong badly needs this second round.
Well, just turning around the front foot there, Nick, and then landed the left into the body. The referee hadn't said anything about breaking. It kind of looked like she might. I think the fighters thought she might, but she didn't. Closing seconds. And this has been tighter this second round. The cat hasn't been able to land as cleanly as she did in the first. Has done it a couple of times, but Jitpong has had her moments as well. Left hand there from Jitpong, right towards the end. And she feels that she's done enough in that second round. It was definitely a closer round. I might just shade the red corner there. But there wasn't a lot in it. If it's split, she needs to get three of the judges' scores to, to give herself a chance going into that third and final round. It's something we've seen quite a lot over the last couple of days. If you can get that third card, then you're in it. And she does. That's exactly the scenario we've got. So it's 3-2 that second round. Three of them in favour of Jitpong. So exactly like our, our first final, the one we've just seen at minimum weight. We've got one fighter here with a two-point margin on two of the cards. And that's Nikat. And the other three cards are 19-19. So Jitpong needs all of those. Nikat needs one. So it's exactly the same thing again. And this is what you want at any stage of a competition, but particularly in finals. You want it as tight as tight can be, and that's what this is. Good combination there from Nikat at the start of the round. She's got to go out there and make absolutely sure that she closes that door on Jitpong. Both of them up tight and close there. That favours Nikat more than it does Jitpong, but there wasn't any room for anybody to really do anything in there that time. Right hand there from Nick Out. I don't think quite got there. Comes in with the right, but again, Jit Ponga just, just pulled back a little bit. She's made that adjustment most of the time since that first round and made it more difficult for Nick Out just to bring those feet in, set them and land. That's where she needs to be, Nick Out, just there. But Jit Pong managed to get out of the way. Throws the one-two, then gets her gloves up. Nick Out looking for that big overhand right. Didn't land. Just beginning to reach for those punches a bit, the Indian fighter. Not really taking those feet in underneath her at times. Fascinating this final round. There's not much in this so far. Heading towards the halfway stage of it. And Jit Pong throws that one two again, just gets that guard up. Hasn't been much clean landed in this round. Just short with the right hand again then, Nick Cat. Maybe lands the left hand there over on the far side of the ring. Referee talking to both of them about, about heads. Combination there from Nick Cat, who does a little bit of work to the body. Into the final minute, and this really is anybody still. Jitpong needs all three of those drawn cards, and for that to happen, it needs to be a fairly convincing round win. But that's some good work there from Nick Out. There was a combination then, at a, the cleanest work we've seen in this final round so far. So for me, that would that would edge her in front. That would get her nose in front in this third round of this 52 kilo final again just reaching for that right hand that's something that's happened more in this third round and i give credit to jit pong for that she's just managed to keep that distance a little bit better than she did in the first right hand there did get through i think from nick at who's landed enough in this final round in this final minute of the final round to see her over the line here i would say because with those three drawn cards she needs just one of them she's got two in her back pocket already and celebrations at the end they're both celebrating the win both look nice and confident but just to remind you of the scenario going into that final round two judges had Nick out 20 points to 18 ahead so she'll have kept those two cards definitely there's no way that Jit Pong has won that final round 10-8 so then we had three scores of 19-19 now she needed to win all of those convert those into 
wins to get a 3-2 split victory, whereas Nikat needs one of them. And I would be surprised, let's put it that way, if she doesn't get one of them. So Nika gets it, and she gets it by unanimous decision too. So that was 10 nines across the board there in her favour in that third and final round. And that was her round, that final round. The final minute of it was where she took it away from her opponent. So she is a gold medalist, and you can just see from the celebrations. I love the celebrations because you see what it means. We had the Olympic Games last year, of course, but this is a, a new cycle. So fighters coming through who haven't got that kind of experience necessarily and we haven't had a women's world championship since 2019 it's been a long break we all know what's happened in the meantime and these fighters are just loving getting this stage and getting the opportunity to compete and the tears are coming there but it was a good performance a really good performance and India get their first gold of this world championships Carried off shoulder high. Well, that's two cracking finals we've had already. Next up, we've got the featherweights. Then we'll have a break for a couple of medal ceremonies. And I'll be looking forward to this one. Yu Ting Lin of Chinese Taipei up against Irma Testa. Both of these two were at Tokyo. Testa picked up a bronze medal the only thing that had been missing from what's well, a pretty sparkling resume actually was a world championship medal and she's done that now Testa's been a European champion a European under 22 champion a world youth champion a youth Olympic Games silver medalist a world junior champion she's done everything apart from medal at the world so now she's done that and she's looking for gold <laughs> 